Hi! Today I wanted to show you how you can create an effect like this, where you have a light cone coming from the camera, or essentially the light cone, well, the cone could as well be invisible, but I'm making it visible to easily tell what's going on, and I actually have seen similar effects in several games before. Now this is red here, if I step out of it, it becomes white, if I step into it, it becomes red again. It's essentially an alarm for anything that goes into the main viewing area of the camera. What you see on the screen here is based on a previous tutorial I did. So if you want to see how to make this, where we can see exactly what the camera is looking at, then I will be putting a link to that tutorial somewhere around. Let's take a look on how you can make this. So for starters, we have a pretty simple scene here. We have this camera. This is the actual camera that can record stuff in game. The parent object of that is just a Note2D, which basically has the entire mesh here. That's the mesh of the visible camera. But this here is what actually has the functionality of a camera. So if we take this camera node here, Let's, for starters, give it a spotlight, so we can see what's happening. Now we want to change the spot here a little, let's make it a bit stronger here, and really tweak here maybe. That seems alright. Let's also make it, let's make the light a bit stronger, let's say 2, 5, 5 seems alright just so we can really see where the light uh, ha ends with its edge. If you want this in a game, of course, you can customize this however you like, but I just want, for the tutorial, to make it very clear where the edge of the light is, so we can see if everything's working. Now, this thing here has the range and the angle. We can use these to customize exactly where the light is going to hit. Like this, like that and it's going to make an exact cone from the starting position up here to however far we want it to go. Now, well, I'll reset these for now, I guess, because this seems fine. And then we can continue by giving this camera here a script. Yeah, I'll just name it camera alarm, I guess. Well, I already have that. Camera alarm 2. There we go, so we don't work with pre-existing stuff. Let's just close all these. Open this one. There we go. Now it's clean. We can see what we're looking at. Now there's a few things we're actually going to need here. We need the script to know what data we set on the spotlight here at any given time. So let's make a reference to the spotlight for now. Already var light equals spotlight. Don't really need a ready function right now, so let's instead go to a process function. Could use physics process instead. Uh, am I actually going to be using delta here? I don't think so, so I'll put an underscore. Now by default I'd say we want the light dot light color to be white. That's going to be our default color. I'm setting that at the start of the process, just so we can change it easily later, whenever we are currently standing inside the light. So now for starters, we want to see which objects we can actually look at. There are two ways to do this. Either we could put a very large collider to see if something is roughly in the area we're looking at. I'm going to go for a simpler option here, which is I will give any nodes that are relevant to this, any node that should be triggering this, which in our case currently is just the player, but it could be something else in your game. And I'll just add them to the camera visible group. This way I can just iterate over these elements. So say we're going for body, I guess, since it's a kinematic body on the player, so I'm just gonna assume so are the others. In get tree get node in get nodes in group there we go and camera visible now we can iterate over all elements of this group and these are all the ones we should actually care about 
Now we want a cone collision. There's no inbuilt cone collision function in Godot, otherwise we could just hook that up to the camera or to the spotlight. But since that's not a thing, we're just going to calculate the position ourselves. It's actually not that difficult. So first of all, let's see if the distance is fine. Now what we need here is, for one, we need to know the position of our camera. So let's just say var cam position is equal to global transform dot origin. Since we're working in 3D, that gives us the exact position the camera is currently in, in global space. Now additionally, we need the location of this body right here. So to do that, we can just create a variable in here, since it's it's part of the loop essentially, it keeps changing. Var body pulse equals body dot global transform dot origin. Now we want to compare these, but we want to compare them to a certain maximum. We want to see how much are these allowed to be apart. So what we can do here is say var max distance squared is equal to light dot what's it called let's take a look range spot range spot range and we want to say power of two the reason we are squaring this instead of just taking the maximum distance is because taking the square root of something is pretty inefficient. It takes quite a while, so it's a lot easier to work with this later on. For this, Godot already has a function we can use. We can say if our camera position dot distance squared to the more efficient option instead of the distance to body position is greater than max distance squared then this here is out of range, so we don't care about it. In which case we just say continue. So the for loop continues and possibly exits. We don't want to process this because it's not in range to begin with, so we just don't care about it. So in case something is close enough that it could be in the cone, now we have to see is the camera actually facing its direction. So what we could say is if we do this in 2D and we have the camera here and it faces in this direction, but it looks in this range of a 2D version of the cone. And we have a player that's maybe here. Then there's another vector here that's pointing at the player. And essentially what we want to see is how large is the angle between these two. How large is this angle? This angle should be less than the angle between the center and the outside of the cone. That's what we want to calculate. So for this there's one thing we need still. We still need to know in which direction is the camera actually facing. In Godot 3D we can do that by saying var cam facing equals minus global transform dot basis dot z axis. Now the reason we have a minus here is because this actually points in the opposite direction of where objects are facing. It essentially points away from there, but it doesn't really help in our case, so we just turn it around. Now, the this is one vector essentially. It's a vector that points in the proper direction the camera is looking at. Now we need a second vector, which points towards the player or whichever object we, can, we are checking if the camera is facing. So cam to body is equal to cam pause dot direction to body pause. So now we have another vector. This is the vector from the camera to the body. Now just in case to make sure this is normalized, I'm just gonna say cam to body norm equals cam to body dot normalized. I didn't actually check if this is normalized by default, but I just don't want to run into any issues later, so I'm doing that now. Now we want to know the angle essentially. For that, first of all, the easier thing is to calculate the cosine of the angle. So cos angle equals cam to body norm. 
using the dot operator cam facing. Now, I'm not doing an exact explanation of what this does, but essentially we can say the dot operator is giving us exactly what we need. It tells us the cosine of the angle between these two. So now we just need to turn it around and get the actual angle. That's of course var angle equals a cos of cosine angle. Now of course we still need to see if angle is less than whichever angle the spotlight has since we are trying to replicate what the spotlight is showing. So we need spot underscore angle. If angle is less than spot angle, light dot spot angle of course, light dot light color equals color dot red. So essentially we are first checking which bodies are actually part of the proper group. We are iterating over all bodies of the correct group. For each of these we are checking the distance squared, which for all intents and purposes is pretty much the distance, and making sure that they are actually close enough to the camera to be relevant. And then we are checking here if the angle is small enough too, so they aren't outside of the range of where the camera is facing. So if we can take a look here, let's see what happens. Okay, so first of all, if we get close enough, the camera turns red indeed as it should. Now let's see. Yes, if we get here, we are in range, but we shouldn't be inside of the angle. It's still turning red. So there's still a bit of an issue here. And this issue should be that our maximum angle is not in the correct form. The A cos here returns an angle in radians, but if we look here, our spot angle is in degrees. So we need to convert these to be compatible. I just do that up here. Max angle equals deck to red of light dot spot angle. Now we have this and can replace the light dot spot angle down here with it and test again and see if this works. This is still turning red fine. And this properly isn't turning red. Now if I walk over here, uh, the origin of my character is actually at the little white ball you can see at its feet. So if I go there, if that, if that enters the light beam, it turns red. And as far as I can tell, everything is aligning exactly with the way the light is rendered. So now I can go in here change the light. Let's say we make less of an angle and we make this a lot longer instead. Try it in game. And let's see, yes, the light is longer now. We're standing right next to it and indeed it we can we can walk around it fine and whenever we touch it it turns red. So this way our collision cone is exactly aligned with whatever the light is currently doing. Of course, for different types of light, you are going to have to calculate this completely differently. This is specifically for collision with a cone, the way the spotlight does it. Of course, currently the uh, camera here is still displaying a lot of stuff that isn't part of that circle. But say we do... Um, let's just change these settings a bit. bit more range, bit more angle. I see some bit glitchy behavior from the light here. Let's see. Let's set this to a bit of a nicer number. So it doesn't go too extreme with the... Uh, yeah, now, now the lighting looks a lot better. Let's see how the precision is in here. Well, it's a bit blurry on the outsides here now, but I think it still looks fine. And now it doesn't cause lighting glitches, so... It's probably better to keep the angle attenuation in a reasonable level. But other than that, this here is freely adjustable to whatever degree you want. And anything inside the cone should be exactly recognized as colliding. Now, let's see. To adjust this a bit, I want to make it less bright around. So let's add a environment, world environment node. That's fine. New environment. 
Let's see, ambient light should be white. That's fine. That should be a lot softer. Yeah, just a little bit of ambient light. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, now we can still see everything, but it's a lot clearer on the screen which area is supposed to be visible because it's the area that's actually lit up. Could even go a bit darker still. Okay, half as much light maybe. Just gotta play around with it a bit and see what looks fine. Yeah, I like this. It's still visible, but it's quite dark, making for a strong difference for what we're working with. Wait, the player used to have a shadow. Did I just turn it off? Oh, yeah, 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 actually in the spotlight the shadow is turned off. Why is that turned off? That should be turned on. It looks a lot light nicer when it's turned on, because now we can actually see the shadow of our character there. There we go. Anyway, that's the effect pretty much complete, with a few more adjustments. This will be all for today. Bye.